Right, so hey guys, and welcome to part one of the GeoPandas for Beginners series. So in this video, we're basically going to be going through the very basics of GeoPandas and its core functionalities, as well as looking at shapefiles and how we basically use them to plot different maps. So to begin with, what we're going to want to do is uh, run a command in um, pip. So we'll do pip install geopandas and this will essentially make sure you have the library installed that we want to use as geopandas is an external library so first things first we're going to import the library so geopandas so import geopandas as gpt gpd we'll give it an alias and uh, second thing you'd also want to do is pip install matplotlib as that's the plotting library that we're going to use to control our axes and uh, change the size of the canvas etc so once you've done that, we want to do form matplotlib.pyplot. Sorry, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. What that will basically do is take the pyplot module um, or the class from the matplotlib library and then allow us to use it whenever we call the plt alias. So if these two have run successfully, good job so far as you've basically installed the library perfectly. So first things first, what we need to know about GeoPandas is that we'll usually be working with something called shapefiles. And in this case, shapefiles basically allows us to um, have a file that contains different areas of a country, for example. And then it will have the geometries that basically tell the code what shape in terms of polygons or multi-polygons um, each part of the country is. So I'll give you guys an example. Um, I've already got a pre-downloaded shapefile or shapefiles for the country UK here and we've got shapefiles for different levels so obviously each country is going to have different levels they will start with a very ungranular level so for example region or state and then they'll go all the way down from state to cities to zip codes for example so in this shapefile the highest um, level of granularity or the lowest you can go is at a postcode sector level which is what the sector.shp file shows uh, the mid-level is district.shp and then the um, least level of granularity is area.shp. The more deeper you sort of go into it, the bigger the files get and the longer the operations will take. So to keep things simple, we're going to go at an ungranular level and we're going to pick areas of the UK. So to read in files, it's very similar to pandas. If you haven't already uh, watched the video I have on pandas, I would really recommend you do as um, it goes through some of the basic functionality and how to use um, querying and stuff like that. So to read in a file, we're going to create a, we're going to do gpd, which is geopandas.read file. And then essentially we're just going to provide a URL to the file. So it's in the shape files folder. And like I said, we're going to use the area version. For this, I'm just going to do area and then we follow it with the alias of .shp. The other files are kind of dependency files that are being used by um, GeoPandas when it's trying to read in this file. So we run this and then what we'll see, like I was saying, there's not many areas as compar in comparison to districts and sectors. So there's only 120 and it looks basically like a Pandas data frame. But the only difference is that it's got a geometry column and this geometry column basically has data on how to plot the different shapes. So for example, Aberdeen, this is how the code will know, will know what shape to plot and whether it's a single polygon or a multi multiple polygon. So I'll give you guys a quick example. If you do dot plot on this, you're able to see all of the shapes that we had in that geometry column or in this geodata frame plotted on a neat UK map because it's a UK shapefile. We can also do cool stuff uh, like querying only specific parts of the shapefiles and then plotting it, which I'll show you in the next part. So to kind of keep things clean and to not load in the data every time, we'll just assign this to a variable. So we'll do shp gb which stands for Great Britain equals, and then we'll uh, store the loaded in shapefile in this variable. Then we can uh, run this again to basically view the content of it. And if you can see here, we have a column called area name, right? So what we can do with that is uh, we can use that to basically find out what kind of area we're trying to plot. So let's say we're only trying to plot Aberdeen in Scotland. We can do dot query and then the column name, which is area name, double equals. And in single quotes, we'll just put in the name of the area name we want to restrict that data frame to. If you run it, we'll see that there was only one row that matched the area name Aberdeen. And then um, we've got obviously all the geometry and stuff for it. So in this filtered data frame, you can then do the plot function again. 
And then what you'll see is it's only going to plot the geometry that is within Aberdeen. So you can do a lot of cool stuff like just plotting um, only specific regions within specific parts of the country and stuff like that as well. So a lot of that is uh, quite basic and straightforward stuff. So let's actually get into the more interesting part of plotting the whole map and making some sense out of it. So in terms of it, we're going to use uh, the uh, PLT um, module that we imported earlier and we're going to create a new figure so we'll do figure comma axis equals plt dot subplots and then you can then specify a figure size um, in the figure size you're basically saying i want my x axis to be this much in inches and my y axis to be this much in inches you can basically select the numbers depending on your needs then what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do um, shp underscore gb dot plot so that's going to take our shape file that we loaded and use the plot function and this time i'm going to assign the axis to the axis that i've just created so that i have more control over it then what you can do next is you can add in several parameters so we can even add in a color map which is we're going to use a default color map from the uh, matplotlib or geopanas library known as set free you can make your own one as well and we'll get to that in one of the other tutorials and then we're going to do legend equals true so that we're actually able to see what's going on now if we run this uh give it a second what you notice is that we have a nice little map and now instead of just being blue it's actually colored right across the map but we don't actually have a legend now the reason behind this is because we've uh, given the code sort of incomplete instructions. We've told it what color map to use, uh, but we haven't told it what column to use to basically define what value is going to change the color of each of these uh, different areas. So to kind of fight that and to make more sense out of it, we need to look into our data frame to see if we have a numeric column that we can use to um, direct the colors of the different areas. So we can use any of these numeric columns. Obviously, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use one of these, but just for now, I'm just going to grab this uh, PCC NT column. It would make more sense if you had data like the population for each of the areas, and then you can use that column to then define the color based on whether there's a lot of population or quite low. So just for tutorial sake, I'm picking a random column in here that has numbers, and then you're going to want to do column equals, and then assign it to oh, assign it to the name of that column so i need to grab the name of the column not the number uh, and that's pcc and t so now it basically knows that when it's doing the um, color map and when it's coloring each of the areas across the uk it has to use the pcc and t numerical column to base the colors off now if you run it again Give it a second what you'll notice is we the legend equals true is actually followed this time because we're actually using a numerical column and we're told the code that we want the colors of the different areas of the uk to be based off the pcc nt column and then you have all the bins as well and that basically basically classifies why each um, area is under which color cool so that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. I'm just going to show you guys a few more functions in terms of cleaning up. And then in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to use some real life data and then plot that across the map as well. So to clean up, we're going to do ax.axis off as that will basically get rid of all the border boxes, which are usually kind of annoying to have. So I'll show you what that looks like now. That's what it'll look like uh, without the border boxes, which already looks a lot neater. And then in terms of like shave, uh, saving the visual, if you wanted to save it as an image, you basically do fig .save fig, give it a name. So I'm going to say um, first.png. Then you can decide whether you want the image to be transparent or not, depending on whether you set this to true or false. And then you can decide on the quality of the image. So the higher the DPI, the higher your quality is going to be. Well, I'm just going to go with 300 for now. Give that a moment to run. And then we should have a test dot. Um, png image with exactly what we asked that's pretty much it for today's tutorial guys hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial please help by subscribing to the channel and helping me get to my target of 100,000 subs and i will see your beautiful faces in the next one peace